Welcome to session two of the Science of Mixed Martial Arts. In this video, we're going to be talking about building unstoppable endurance. And in the last session, we talked about uh, some really fundamental principles, the metabolic demands of mixed martial arts. We talked about energy systems. It got a little heavy, but hopefully you picked up some key concepts from that lecture. Now we're going to apply those concepts and show you how we build endurance using different uh, specific training strategies. In the next session, session three, we're going to go back to basics. We're going to talk about the basic, the fundamental structure of muscle and how it functions. And kind of like what we're doing in this session, session two, we're going to do something similar in session four. We're going to apply what we learned about the basic structure and function of muscles, and we're going to teach you exactly how we build explosive strength and power. That's muscle strength and muscle power. Uh, and after that, we're going to talk about overtraining. We're going to talk about warm ups and flexibility. We're going to talk about how we put all these things together in one kind of unified theory that's periodization. And we're going to finish off this whole series by talking about testing and evaluation. Some learning objectives for this lecture. I want you to understand the pros and cons of low versus high intensity interval training and endurance training. And I want you to know how to manipulate various things like movement patterns and work intervals and rest intervals and exercise intensity to train the aerobic energy system, to train the glycolytic energy system, other metabolic processes, and the ATP PCR system. So these are the different sections of this video session. First, we're gonna focus on low versus high intensity training. Then we're gonna talk about factors that influence which energy system you target. Then we're gonna talk about the influence of movement pattern on which energy system you're gonna train. And then we're gonna talk about how you train the aerobic energy system, the glycolytic energy system, other important processes in mixed martial arts, and finally, the ATP PCR system. So let's start by looking at low versus high intensity training. So we know the difference between those and we know which one is probably gonna be more effective than the other if you wanna optimize your performance on fight day. Let's first look at low intensity training. Now, if you don't know, low intensity training, it's going for a 10K run or maybe running for 60 minutes. So it's running for or exercising for a prolonged period of time and so by its very nature, it has to be undertaken at a, a little bit of a lower intensity than compared to sprinting. There are some possible benefits. It's popular, it's safe. You can improve your aerobic fitness without any question. And that's important for mixed martial arts. It's probably gonna be useful for, for, for helping somebody control their body weight. And this is you know, probably what a lot of people do it for. And it may also be good to use um, sporadically through your, your training program as a recovery workout. And all these things are pretty important. But there may be some drawbacks to low intensity endurance training. You may, as a result of the lower stress, the lower intensity that you're working with, see a lower adaptation to training, and that's going to translate into a, a reduced performance. If you're always training or running at a, a, an intensity that is low, say for example, lower than the perceived exertion that you feel during a particular fight, then it's probably going to be ineffective. There's also a greater likelihood of over injury, overuse injury. So for example, your knees, if you're constantly running on hard surfaces for extended periods of time. And this is the most important one that I really wanna draw your attention to. If you're constantly engaged in low intensity endurance training, then you're probably gonna cause a shift um, in fiber types from maybe if you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of type two fibers, which are responsible for power and strength, you may cause a shift uh, towards type 1 fibers which are responsible for endurance and they have less power. So this shift is, is going to ultimately result in a reduction in your strength and power. And this is probably the biggest concern that I have um, when, when fighters say that they're engaging in, in low intensity uh, endurance training. I think it's going to cause a negative um, impact on their strength and power development. So let's in contrast look at high intensity training. So when we talk about high intensity training, we're talking about short bursts of high intensity effort. So think of sprinting for a short period of time and then taking a rest. So it's gonna have a work to rest ratio. And this is often referred to as high intensity interval training. Now there are some benefits. You can improve your aerobic fitness. There's a lot of research to back this up, which is fantastic because that's really important. Training those energy systems, the aerobic energy system, that's important to the, to the mixed martial arts fighter and coach. You can also improve your anaerobic exercise performance. So not only are you gonna be able to focus 
on and target aerobic energy systems. You can also focus on and target anaerobic processes, which is also important in mixed martial arts. The ATP PCR system, the anaerobic glycolytic system, you're not really going to be able to target those with low intensity uh, endurance training. And most importantly, when you train with high intensity uh, endurance training or high intensity interval training, you're going to have less effect on your strength and power gains. And we all know strength and power is important in mixed martial arts. Now, it's not all sunshine and butterflies and roses. There are some possible cons with high intensity interval training. And it's, it's really found in the very nature of, of this type of training. It's high intensity. So that may predispose a fighter to overreaching and overtraining. And we're gonna have another session that deals specifically with both of those concepts. But you really need to be aware of that. If you're constantly training at a very high intensity, then it may cause you to burn out sooner. So you have to really control it. You have to periodize your training if you're gonna use this type of training. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in a future, in a future session. But what I wanna do in the rest of this session is I wanna focus on all the different factors that can influence um, the different energy systems that you're gonna target, and these are them. We're gonna focus on how you manipulate your movement pattern to target a particular energy system, how you manipulate exercise intensity, and how you manipulate the rest period, and how you manipulate the work interval length. All of these things will influence which energy system you target, and I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know about it in the next couple slides. So let's talk about movement pattern first. If you're choosing high power output movement patterns, then you're choosing things like resisted sprinting, you know, uphill sprinting or pushing a sled. You're choosing things like Olympic lifts or maybe rope climbing or tire flipping or even unresisted sprints. And if you're talking about MMA specific movements, it's gonna be striking and takedown combinations. You know, these big powerful MMA specific combinations that require a lot of power that really gas you out. When you're choosing those high power output movement patterns, then those are gonna be effective in targeting the anaerobic energy systems. Not so much the aerobic energy systems because you're automatically targeting the anaerobic ones. You're not gonna be able to make it more than a couple uh, minutes when you're using these, these type of movement patterns. So take home message, choose high power output movements when you wanna target the anaerobic energy systems. When you're choosing moderate power output movements, you can really use those to target any energy system. So what do I mean when I'm talking about moderate power output movements? Well, they're gonna be things like functional lifts, like kettlebells or sandbags, things like standing striking combinations. It's gonna be unresisted running or sprinting or other whole body movements like rowing or cycling or jump squats, things like that. But there's a lot of variation here because if you're to choose a very heavy kettlebell, it's gonna be very, very heavy or a very heavy sandbag, you're more than likely gonna be targeting the anaerobic energy systems. You're not gonna be able to make it very long in that workout. You're not gonna be able to target the aerobic energy systems. So I say that moderate power output movements can target energy system, but it really, it depends upon how much resistance you have. The more resistance, the more likely it is that you'll target the anaerobic energy systems. The less, the more likely it is you'll target the aerobic energy systems. And then finally, when you're choosing low power output movements, we're talking about ground-based striking combinations, whole body movements like running or rowing or cycling, arm related movements like rope swings, arm bikes, skipping, shadow boxing. Those are primarily going to be reserved for targeting the aerobic energy systems. So you're going to be choosing moderate to low power output movements, and then you're going to be manipulating the work to rest ratio, the work interval length and the rest interval length to influence your metabolic target. And then I'm going to give you an example workout just to hit this message home. So the aerobic energy system is the most important in mixed martial arts. And when you want to target it, you should be using work to rest ratios that range from one to 0.5 to one to one and a half. A typical work interval length is going to be three to five minutes long. So that means that you're setting your watch for three to five minutes and then you're just running or rowing or whatever it is for that period of time. And then you're going to take a rest interval immediately thereafter of two to six minutes long. And again, the metabolic target here, it's going to be aerobic oxidation. So here's an example workout so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Something like six times, five minutes on, two and a half minutes off uh, would be an example of uh, a workout that would target aerobic oxidation. Another example, six times, three minutes on, two minutes off with a one minute buildup. So let me explain what I'm talking about here. When I say five minutes on, I'm assuming, or three minutes on, that's your work interval. I'm assuming that you're working as hard as you can for that entire block. So your pace for the five minute block is gonna be a little bit slower than for the three minute block. 
but you're still working as hard as you can for that entire block and that's really important. When I say off, it means that you're completely off, you're just standing around, you're not moving, it's complete rest. And then when I say this thing called a build up, a one minute build up in this case, it's a slow gradual progression of getting your pace up to speed for that work interval. So at the beginning of that minute you should be jogging, at the end of that minute you should be at your work interval pace. So let's talk about how you target a glycolytic energy system. Now bear in mind there's going to be a lot of overlap between this system, especially at the borders of it, and other energy systems. So uh, let's just run through these workouts so you have an idea. Now if you're going to choose work to rest ratios in 1 to 3 and 1 to 4 region, your work interval can be in the 2 minute range and your rest interval can be in the 6 to 8 minute range, you're really going to be targeting, I guess, the, the low end of aerobic energy systems there. So really aerobic glycolysis. An example workout there, five to eight times, two minutes on, seven minutes off, and one minute build up. That's actually gonna be a pretty good workout for improving your VO2 max. You got a lot of time to rest, to dissipate all those metabolites that build up during the workout. That's a great workout. Another uh, type of workout you can do in this area, one to 0 0.5 to one to 1 1.5 is a work to rest ratio. Your, your work interval is also gonna be two minutes, except you're only gonna have one minute off now. So you're going to have a lot of buildup of metabolites and it's going to be a pretty painful workout. This workout is going to target a combination of aerobic glycolysis and phosphocreatine resynthesis, which is pretty important in MMA. Typical workout, 6 to 12 times, 2 minutes on, 1 minute off, 30 seconds build up. Another workout, work to rest ratio 1 to 0 0.5, it's pretty low. You got a work interval of 2 minutes with a rest interval of anywhere from 1 to 3 minutes. And this type of workout is very similar to the one that we just mentioned. It's really going to be focusing on your body's ability to deal with that metabolic environment. So I'm calling this a buffering style workout. Typical workout, 6 to 12 times, 2 minutes on, 2 minutes off with 30 second build up. So you're giving yourself a little bit more time here to dissipate some of those metabolites. Finally, the last one, work to rest ratio of 1 to, uh, 1 to 5 to 1 to 6. The work interval length is dropping here, 30 seconds to 90 seconds. Your rest interval, it should increase, 2 minutes to 9 minutes. This is in the low end, so you're probably going to be targeting a little bit of the ATP PCR system and then the anaerobic glycolytic processes. A typical workout, 4 to 8 times, 60 seconds on, 4 minutes off with a 1 minute build up. I wanted to show you some other types of workouts that are going to be useful in MMA. So here's one, work to rest ratio of 1 to 3. Your work interval length is around 30 seconds, rest interval length around 90 seconds. Your metabolic target here is going to be anaerobic glycolysis, so you're going to see some buildup of metabolites. It's on the low end, so you're also going to be targeting the capacity of the ATP PCR system. And you're also going to be improving buffering. Typical workout here, 7 to 10 times, 30 seconds on, 60 seconds off with a 30 second buildup. Another work to rest ratio here. Notice how these change. Big work to rest ratio, 1 to 30. So you're taking 30 seconds working on and about 10 minutes off. You're going to be targeting anaerobic glycolysis, ATP PCR system, and glycolytic enzymes. It has a lot of rest because you're really trying to dissipate all of the metabolites that build up and it can take a long time to dis dissipate a lot of the lactic acid. So this is a, a very specific workout that should be used at very specific times in your fight plan and we'll, we'll talk more about when that is in a future lecture. Example workout, 7 to 10 times, 30 seconds on, 9 minutes off with 1 minute build up. And the last one, work to rest ratio of 1 to 45, 20 seconds on, 15 minutes off. This is really focusing on the ATP PCR system and glycolytic enzymes. The same principle, we want to make sure that you're totally clear of all metabolites and you're ready to give that effort 20 seconds a maximum. So this is really going to, uh, to be used at certain times of your fight plan just like the one before it. Typical workout, 7 to 10 times, 20 seconds on, 14 minutes off, and 1 minute build up. So again, we're going to show you when you should be using these in a future video. Let's talk about how you target the ATP PCR system. You're going to be using work to rest ratios of 1 to 20. Your work interval length is going to be short, 5 to 6 seconds. Your rest interval, about a minute and a half. And ATP PCR system is your main target. Here's an example workout, 15 times, 5 seconds on. 60 seconds off with 30 second build up. Another example here, work to rest ratio of 1 to 10, work interval length somewhere in the region of 5 to 6 seconds and your rest interval length is going to be just uh, around a minute and a half, maybe a little bit shorter. 
This is gonna focus on, again, the ATP PCR system, but also buffering of metabolites because you have less time to dissipate those, those metabolites. Here's an example workout, 15 times six seconds on, 60 seconds of light jogging, and then you go back to it. And here's another workout. This is kind of an interesting one. You perform six times, six seconds on, 10 seconds off, and then you take a three minute rest. And then you perform that whole block three to six times. So that's a nice little workout. So let's summarize. Long, slow distance training, it will improve aerobic fitness, which is great, but it's also gonna impair your strength and power gains, and that's important in mixed martial arts. And that's because you're causing a shift in intermediary fibers to behave and look like more type one fibers than type two fibers. And you need those type two fibers to generate strength and power. High intensity interval training, on the other hand, will also improve aerobic fitness, but it's not gonna be associated with as great a reduction in strength and power. Factors that will influence endurance training in high intensity interval training are movement pattern, intensity, work to rest ratio, and your work interval length. If you manipulate these factors as I've taught you how to and showed you in this lecture, then you will be able to target all the energy systems that we talked about, the aerobic energy system, the glycolytic energy system, other metabolic processes that you now know are important in mixed martial arts, and the ATP PCR system. Okay, so let's leave it there for this session. Uh, next time we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna explore the structure and function of muscle. So we'll see you then, take care.